Well everyone, we have some Vega from Tier Benchmarks, but more importantly, we have a little bit of gaming information. So stay tuned. Welcome back to GamerMeld. It looks like PC World was given the opportunity to run some benchmarks on the new Vega Frontier card and actually discuss the results prior to its release. Unfortunately, AMD didn't let them do any gaming benchmarks per se. I'll go over that in a minute, but first let's kind of go over what they did do. The card was faced up against NVIDIA's newest Titan, the X lowercase p. Ugh. Anyway, it's actually pretty interesting. I initially thought the Founders Edition was essentially the new name for their Instinct line announced back at the end of 2016, or possibly some weird media area like this, but I don't know. It was weird, since we didn't really hear much more on it after that, well, until just recently, but that's for another day. Either way, the Vega Frontier card doesn't have any double precision or 64-bit compute, which I noticed that in my original discussion where I went over pricing links. To that, the normal air-cooled card is officially $1199 which makes it the same price as the Titan XP. Either way, this card mostly isn't made to go against NVIDIA's Tesla or Quadraline. Well, sort of. It's weird. I'd say it's almost a mediary card to the Titan XP and Quadro or Tesla line, which is why they did some comparisons to Tesla in the past, although obviously very cherry-picked benchmarks. The main competitor of Tesla and Quadro goes to the Radeon Instinct line. Now, don't get me wrong, there's still a reason the Frontier card is so expensive. It has plenty of half-precision compute and some other goodies. What's interesting, and don't worry, I'm getting to gaming soon, but it seems this card may actually be a much bigger deal to professionals than many think. It's odd, as the card has pro-optimized software, though not fully certified drivers, whatever that means. Still, the Titan XP only has consumer drivers, period. Of course, the extent of the Frontier Edition's drivers seems valid, but hard to pinpoint at this time, so I can't really say too much on that. Anyway, to the benchmarks. You can see the Titan XP certainly loses at the benchmarks done with the test benches using the same CPU, memory, and all that, with the differences being the GPUs. Keep in mind that these are benchmarks mostly made to measure the professional workload capability of your PC. Now, I read some comments about how the $800 Quadro P4000 beats Vega in similar benchmarks, and you can see there are a couple where that's true. But I think this is what most people are missing. The aim of this card is essentially to be a mediary card that can kind of do it all. Be great at professional work and typical graphic intensive workloads. Basically, for the mid-sized professional groups who don't have the huge budget, as AMD spokesman reiterated multiple times. According to AMD, most professionals will throw out the low-end pro cards that the workstation comes with and purchase the consumer cards. To show what I mean, you can see the Quadro P5000, a $2,000 card, isn't even as good as the 1080 in graphical workloads. This is just a single synthetic benchmark, but you get the idea. While I couldn't find one for the P4000, you can imagine it's a good bit less. Now, I'm going to use this as the perfect segue into the graphical power of Vega. AMD didn't let them run any actual benchmarks, so this is far from scientific. But either way, their personal opinion is that they were indistinguishable, but that their initial estimates still hold true from the Sniper Elite 4 demo at the earnings call. That it will be, quote, faster than the NVIDIA's GTX 1080 and close to that of a GTX 1080 Ti card. So this card is definitely above even the $2,000 card in gaming, but since it more than likely falls short of the Titan XP, is the difference in professional prowess worth it? I honestly don't know, as I really don't handle these type of workloads, but it at least seems to fill a gap where at least some might be interested. So, I think the question is then to ask how RX Vega will compare. Obviously we don't know for sure, but there was a tweet by Bits and Chips that claims their sources say it's going to be great price to performance. I would of course take that with a grain of salt, but really I don't think it's too tough to answer. It's been explained already that RX Vega will feature higher gaming performance than the Frontier card. With that card running closer to 1080 Ti speeds, there's at least a chance it can either fall just under it or right on par. That's pretty sweet, but I just don't know if the price can be different enough. That's kind of the real problem I have with the memory they have and everything else. I don't really know. The biggest problem is whether a card that's capable of doing what a current card can is just too late. Some will argue the TI has only been out a few months, but that's still tough to swallow.
I really don't know how AMD is going to fare in the gaming market, and I honestly think that's why they aren't really wanting to show much. But once again, I'm not sure. I mean, let's say that they can pull it off for $100 less. That would definitely be a nice bonus for people looking at 1080 Ti's performance. So while that does it today, if you liked the video, definitely don't forget to subscribe and click that little bell. It honestly really helps me out. And I want to know what you think. How does the Frontier Edition card stack up, and do you think RX Vega will be a welcome sight or just fighting an uphill battle? Let me know in the comments below. That does it for now. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe by clicking on the round icon in the middle. You can check out the most recent video and suggested video to the left. Thanks so much for coming, and as always, have a great day.